Yes people, welcome back to my personal channel, welcome back to another match review for you guys today. It's Chelsea 3, West Ham 0 and yes, it definitely wasn't a 3-0 win sort of performance. But we needed a win, we didn't care too much whether it was 1-0, whether it was 3-0, we just needed to go and collect the W and that is exactly what we did today. Wasn't the most beautiful performances in the game, absolutely dragged for long periods of it. But the one thing we needed was that W and we did it, we need to break that duck. Of not, of not beating a team in the top 10 so far this season and we did that as well. We also needed to get rid of that duck of losing to West Ham all the time and we done that as well. So all in all, not the worst of performances. I am more than happy leaving this game with a W and with three goals to show for it as well. But we're going to delve deeper into this game later on in the video. So if you guys haven't done so already, please hit that like button, press that subscribe button, smash the bell notification button as well to get the three goals just like Chelsea did today. And let's go straight into the review. Chelsea 3, West Ham United 0. Now the lineup came out and there was a couple changes, but they were all really understandable. Jorginho came into the starting lineup, which was a surprise inclusion to be fair. I thought it was going to be Mateo Kovacic that came in, but we ended up dropping N'Golo Kante a bit further forward into his centre midfield role. Nothing too wrong with that, and I thought Jorginho started the game pretty well to be fair. He petered out as the game progressed, but I thought his first half was solid, so I ain't complaining too much about it. Aspilicueta also came in on the right hand side with Reese James out with a potential knock that we don't know how long he's out for but we know he's been rested for a few games as a precaution. But Aspilicueta coming in we already know there's barely any issues. We know if there's any problem it's possibly how quickly he can come up and down that right hand side but he had an amazing performance today so we ain't even going to speak too much about it. The whole back line in my opinion had a great game today and was possibly our strongest part of the team in the entire match. Uh, Tammy Abraham also returned to the starting lineup, which makes it look very likely likely that Olivier Giroud might be signed against Arsenal. Even though potentially Tammy Abraham's performance and his output today might have put himself back into the starting lineup for that game as well. But the lineup was strong. I didn't have anything too deep about it. There was no issues. And it was a very feisty game, especially in the start. I thought West Ham came out all guns blazing and so did Chelsea. They had an early goal ruled out for offside from Declan Rice, which looked like a very bait audition from him. And he had a good performance in himself today as well. But as early as they got their goal, we got our goal straight afterwards and ours actually stood. Tiago Silva off yet another corner like I'm still not used to us being this good defending and attacking corners and facing a West Ham side that are good at corners as well I think that's the first goal they've conceded from a corner this entire season someone correct me if I'm wrong but first goal Thiago Silva great goal and you know what it justifies the performance as well because you had a man of the match performance today every game that goes by it looks even more and more mad that Leonardo allowed him to leave PSG on a free what a coup by Marina what a player best center back in the league by a mile after that it was a massive tussle for control from both sides i thought west ham side getting more and more into the game or if anything i will take that back i think chelsea plays with a more pr pragmatic mindset where we just wanted to get the win and come out of it come out of it with a w because game management was awful against wolves and if anything the way that we played today was probably the way that we should have played against wolves and we would have stood a better chance we got the goal we sat back a, a, another 10 yards people are going to say it was a poor performance people are going to say that players were off for a long periods of time and i get it. the 60 minutes straight after that goal was absolutely dreadful for Football. But it was defensive football. It was defensive minded football. We were there to protect the lead as soon as we had it because we were going on a run of two losses. And the number one thing we wanted to do was break that duck. So I'm cool with that. I don't care about a performance like that. Sometimes you have to grind out these performances. That is exactly what we did today. So I don't mind too much about that. My issues are more further forward up. I thought our biggest issues was the final pass because whenever we did try and counter attack West Ham, Players were holding onto the ball for too much. Timo Werner, there was opportunities where he was on the right-hand side and nobody fed him. Same things when he, where there was one with Christian Pulisic as well and nobody fed him as well. We need to start keeping our heads up more when we're counter-attacking because we're missing these runs way too often. And it's, and it's something that always happens. Kai Havertz has been plenty of times where he's made really smart runs and nobody has noticed him. This is a regular feature that we do want to try and cut out, but it will go. It will go with time. And I'm not going to try and be too negative on this video as well, especially on that point because if we're going to talk about negativity we should probably talk about him and just get it off our chest right now Timo Werner boy this guy man I, I I'm still I'm still fully on the Timo Werner hype train and I know this guy is going to come good but this confidence thing is really starting to get to him first things first 
can, please, can we just stop playing him on the left wing? I'm so sick to death of it. Like, at the very least, I saw when he played on the right-hand side towards the end of the second half, there was a lot more out of him. And his best chance of the game, the one where he hit the crossbar towards the end of the match, came from him coming off that right-hand side, coming onto his stronger foot. That is where he is so much more stronger. He is not good on this left-hand side. I mean, granted, he did get the assist for Tammy Abraham's third goal. Also, disclaimer, it looked a, a lot more like a shot than it was an assist. But Timo Werner does not look confident. He does not look at his best on that left-hand side. He doesn't look like there's any self-belief in himself from there. He's very instinctual. But you know when he's coming down on that left-hand side, he needs to open himself up and he needs to get that right foot out. And that's what's causing him the issues because he's too predictable off that, le that left-hand side. Right-hand side, you've got him on his stronger foot. He can create a lot more problems. He'll be a lot more confident on the ball. Left-hand side, it doesn't work also i will say that but i'll also say as well he does also need to be more clinical like we know that's the type of striker he is he's a high volume strike and it was the same thing at rb leipzig but that's something that he needs to get out of his game in the premier league because he is not going to get as many chances as he does in germany he'll get that out of his game i am still confident in him but there are holes there are areas of his game that needs to improve that shot in the first half where he just basically passed it straight to fabianski that cannot run I'm sorry, that cannot run. That was absolutely dreadful. And R Werner is getting so much stick right now, which is so jarring because I know he is a quality striker. All us Chelsea fans know he's a quality striker. It's just you need to play to his strengths. He's at his best when he has space around him if you, if, if you want to play him on the left-hand side. So if you're going to do that, play him on the left against a progressive team against a progressive team that is actually going to try and give us chances. Nothing like the game that we had today because it was bait and obvious that it wasn't working. The one thing I'll give Frank Lampard credit is that Frank Lampard at least changed it. He saw it wasn't working, he tried interchange it a bit more. There was periods where Timo Verne was in the middle. There was periods where he was on the right, there was periods where he was on the left. Let's just stop doing him on the left now because it, it just doesn't work. Uh, second half... Until we got the second goal, it was more of the same. It was a massive drag watching. But then things finally started to click. Timo, Ver I mean, Tammy Abraham was able to find the player after bringing down the ball, which he was doing a great job of. But before that, he was getting the ball down and struggling to get it out of his feet. But he showed exactly what he can do when things work for him because he, he started that attack to the second goal himself. And the third goal as well, it all came from a goal kick and Tammy Abraham taking it down and starting the attack. And it was two great finishes from him as well. So perfect from him because that will give him a bit of confidence as well coming straight back into the starting lineup after a run of poor results. I don't know if that puts him back into the starting lineup, but that puts him more in contention. But yeah, that killed off the game and that was exactly what we needed at that point in the second half and after that point it was just sustaining it and just seeing out the rest of the game and that was all we were trying to do from 1-0 up so all in all we grinded it out it weren't a terrible performance I'm happy with it moving on to player ratings Edward Mendy again I didn't think he had much to do I don't did West Ham even have a shot on target I know they had two goals but neither of them counted and other than that I don't think they had a shot on target the entire match so I'm gonna give Edward Mendy a six uh, as for Equator, I thought he was probably our best creator going forward on the right in the first half. Jorginho was finding him plenty of times and the delivery was pretty good from him as well. Only made one mistake the entire match, so I'm going to give him a 7. And all round, the defence gets a minimum of 7. They were amazing today. Bar that one mistake from As for Equator, I thought everyone was perfect. Thiago Silva gets a 9. Absolute brick wall today. West Ham could have played for another hour and a half. They still wouldn't have got past this man. What a coup getting in for free. I've said it already. I do have to say it again. Again, brilliant signing and best centre back in the league by a mile. Kurt Zuma gets an 8. I think he's just underneath Thiago Silva, but that's because of how good his performances were. So he gets an 8. Ben Chilwell can't give him a rating. He had about 10 touches the entire match before he came off injured, so he ain't going to give him anything. Jorginho, good passing in the first half. I thought he petered out more towards the second half. He started getting found out and getting bypassed a lot more as the game continued. And then he came off, which was a smart move from Frank Lampard. So I'm going to give him a six and a half. Mason Mount, oh, excellent performance today. And he just signified yet again why this guy starts for us every week. Probably the best guy pressing the team right now. Him and N'Golo Kante was excellent with both of them in the number eight role. So he's going to get a seven. Kante... Bar that slip, another excellent performance. He's going to get a 7 from me as well. Timo Werner. This one is an interesting one because his movement was great. It's just the final product. Um, I'll probably have to give him a... Because he got the assist, I say got the assist because that was really more a shot than an assist. 
Um, probably a four. I'll be real, it, it wasn't a great performance. Remember, he's not looking confident either. We, we gotta play the long game with Timo Vano. I'm guessing it's gonna be a very long Christmas. But if he's saving all these goals for the Emirates on Saturday, I am not gonna complain too much. So fourth for Timo Vano, but it's cool, it's cool. It, well, there's more games coming, don't worry. Tammy Abraham. I'm not going to be too reactionary based off the two goals because I thought he really struggled for long periods of the game other than that. Like I said earlier, he struggled to get the ball out of his feet. He was getting swarmed by West Ham players because we were playing a very pragmatic style. So it was hard for him for long periods, but I thought he was good. I thought he was good. So with the two goals, I'm going to push it up to a six because I don't think he was that great minus the two goals. Christian Pulisic does need to keep his head up a bit more. He looks like he's still getting back to his best. Like, still a bit more struggles of inconsistencies, but he's getting there. It was a solid performance from him, so I'm going to give him a six and a half. Emerson as well, quietly good performance today. I was very worried when I saw him warming up because I was thinking, oh my gosh, Emerson again. But he shut me up. What a great performance from him. So he's going to get a seven. And Kai Havertz, I don't really think he had enough time to do anything. He had barely any touch on the ball either, so I'm not going to give him a rating. But guys, that is the end of player ratings plus the review for Chelsea 3, West Ham 0. On to Arsenal, and you know what that means, AFTV previews. And you know what I told you guys, after all the smack I was hearing over the summer, Arsenal could not be mid-table when we did these previews, otherwise I was going to come with smoke. Now they're five points off relegation. Now Burnley could overtake them if they win their next game, and they have a game in hand too. We're going to have some fun over the week. So guys, stay tuned. I hope you all enjoy the content that comes out this week. And I hope Chelsea get the W as well to justify it. And that means I can drop an AFTV reaction video as well. But guys, until then, take care. Hope you all enjoyed the game. Check out the live phone and I'll be out straight after this video. And up the Chelsea.